because uh, even though it is very popular in the USA in the Western Europe, but I feel like Ukraine is still a bit uh, has a bit old-fashioned views about it, and I would love to share more uh, what it really means and why it still matters. First of all, I would love to start that there is a wrong assumption that. Uh, Feminists are people who think that they are better than men and who think that they have some special privileges, have to have some special privileges, and so on. But it's not true. In order to be a feminist, you just have to be, has to, have to be uh, on board with one idea that everyone, every human, both female and man, uh, male, has um, the same rights, uh, equ uh, political, economic, uh, and social ones. Uh, I feel like uh, even though it's still it's getting more and more popular and people are accepting this term, but uh, still there is a lot of uh, negative association with it. I think it is because of how media represents this movement. We often see a feminist as a woman who hates men, who hates makeup, who hates uh, women who stay at home and so on. And because of that uh, there are all this wrong uh, assumption and even uh, there are anti-feminist campaigns where women themselves use such uh, phrases as I don't need a feminism because I think I already have equal rights or I don't need a feminism because men have problems too and so on. And such things show how wrong people still are about this movement. Uh, it is not a bad word, it doesn't mean that women want to be the only ones on the planet, raise their children alone and just delete men from their life. Uh, it doesn't mean uh, that being a feminist doesn't mean that you have to look or wear stuff or date uh, someone special or some certain type of things. It doesn't mean that uh, women feel that they are better than men. They just think that they are uh, the same, um, the same humans. Also, even though the primary reason of feminism was to empower women. It does not mean that uh, women see all the women as uh, like uh, oppressed and weak. It's just that uh, they know that they are strong already and they want the society to see it too. It also doesn't mean that empowering women means uh, uh, punishing men or belittling them. It just means that everyone has to be judged by their strengths and capabilities as a person not uh, their strengths and capabilities based on your gender. Uh, some people say that this thing, the feminism is a thing of the past, that we don't need it anymore because there is no patriarchal, patriarchal system that we can vote and that um, we have the same uh, equal employment opportunities. But if it was really true, I don't think there would be still this pay gap uh, going on. There, I see, it's great actually that a lot of women think that they have the same rights as men. Uh, but if it wasn't for all those feminist movements before us, uh, we wouldn't be here now and who knows what would go on. So we shouldn't stop until every woman on the planet feels the same way, that we have the same rights. It is actually quite alarming and frightening when I hear that uh, women say that uh, they don't need it anymore in their lives and uh, I think they should look further at what they see around themselves. And if they are lucky enough to have the right to speak, it doesn't mean that uh, each woman on the planet has the same right. And being a feminist also, why we shouldn't stop pushing this moment further is because still when people get married, uh, it is a woman who has uh, to take uh, the last name of a man because uh, when a woman is assaulted, uh, she is the one who feels ashamed. Because when um, we still teach women not to not to how to prevent rape instead of teaching people uh, of not to see women as objects, and also because women are still told that walking alone at night is dangerous and they are like an easy thing to get. In. No. Um, so, also
so green factions doesn't mean to tell women what they have to do. It's just showing that they can do and be whatever they want to be, whether it's stay at home, whether it be an engineer or CEO. And just in general, every person in the society should have limitless possibilities and uh, not uh, just some, uh, a few ones based on their gender. I think it's true, but well, it's all because uh, um, when it's alright when people don't share their opinions, but when they do and uh, these opinions are based on these wrong assumptions and wrong ideas, uh, they should uh, study the subject further and more thoroughly uh, and only then make any judgments about this topic. Thank you very much. in black and white and then smoothly turns into colors. This change is made so slowly that many people even do not notice how the objects are being filled with colors. The same happens in our life when we are surrounded by positive people. Five years I was working in a company with a Frenchman on CFO position. Can you imagine? He started each working day walking around the office and greeting everyone he met with a broad smile and jokes. Hello, Marsha. Nice dress. Is it new? No? Tell people it is new. Hello, Wasi. White shoes. Did you buy them on Jodhny Rynok? No? I want the same for my white party. To say the truth, when Alex Joseph just joined our company, we didn't understand his sense of humor at all. <laughs> Sometimes, when he made a logic pause for us to laugh, and saw us staying stony faced like this, he said, Guys, smile, it was a joke. But Alex was persistent in his trials and efforts, and so we even like his sense of humor. However, it was still a little bit straightforward to us, especially when he joked about love affairs. <laughs> even when other company was sold out and Charlie Joseph had to leave it, he didn't joke him. You know, Anna? My wife is now in Paris, and if I tell her I'm unemployed, Bezrobitko, as you say, I also need to leave for Paris. But I tell her it in two weeks, and have a bachelor's party each day during this time. Good idea? <laughs> I really adored how he kept his positive and sense of humor even under such circumstances. Whatever happened, Alex Joseph always looked as everything was absolutely fine. Besides work, and I want to tell, he was a real hard worker. He enjoyed three things in life. Life itself, good wine, and communication with people. A joke about love affairs. <laughs> we didn't notice that very moment with our colleagues when our usual black and white attitude to problems smoothly turned into colors. And all the small bad that happened to us from time to time brought us lots of fun. At the time, there was a company of me and seven more girls at our office who used to spend time together. Once we bought the tickets to theater, we were so excited waiting for the day when one spring evening we leave our office together, beautiful and smiling, go to the theater, have a glass of wine and then enjoy the opera. This day came. We successfully fulfilled our before theater program. <laughs> then we went to our seats, calm and happy. But 
something definitely went wrong. The seats had been already occupied by the Chinese men. Can you imagine? We kindly asked them to leave, but they kept waving with their tickets. Finally, we compare our tickets, and you know what? How silly we felt when found only that very moment that we mixed the date. <laughs> <laughs> we bought the, ticket, the tickets for the same opera, but one month forward. Can you imagine? One month forward. But what can make upset the girls? age of girls, especially after a glass of wine. Our French colleague used to say, the theater staff uh, didn't have such tricky situations often since we successfully passed the entrance check and we are so kind to suggest us the seats for free on the very bottom row next to the ceiling. But in one month we went to the theater again to the same opera with the same tickets. So, as you see, we had no reasons to be upset at all. Do you think it was our only adventure for the time? <laughs> of course not. There was one more I... Come, please. There was one more I especially like to remember. At the time, we had a good tradition with the same company of girls twice a month on Thursday to go to Bunny. <laughs> yeah, why not? Imagine one first day. 6 p.m. Our ladies' bed is already way, uh, ready to leave. Our hands are full uh, with all the stuff we needed. Our taxi cars are already waiting for us. When one of our girls comes, her cell phone in hands, her eyes open broad. Ladies, our bunny has been burned. <laughs> what? <laughs> Did they cancel our booking? No, you do not understand. Our bunny has been burned. The gorilla. <laughs> it's really good to recheck everything in life twice. Just imagine the situation when all this company of girls come to outskirts of Kiel and see only the ashes of their bunny. <laughs> Whatever Alex Joseph said when he heard the story. Girls, it's all because you had always refused to take me with you to Bania. <laughs> <laughs> but it was also a joke. Madam Josma.
prefer to think about me that I'm a kind person, but I really hope that uh, they will grow up. Um, and I start uh, to think about it. Why she um, so like like that? What's what's for one curious her? Is it uh, our world is better? Is it uh, uh, such kind of uh, infantile people uh, could survive? Or uh, it's really a problem of generation or something like that. Uh, and I remembered, um, I'm a sociologist, so I uh, remembered what uh, we teach uh, at university about generational uh, theory. Actually, my teachers, they don't like it because uh, they said that it's not science, it's not statistical uh, route. And, uh, I, as I remember, the one thing uh, that uh, they told us uh, at lectures is that uh, millennials is the, are the worst uh, students in their career. <coughs> we are lazy, we, are, um, can, we can concentrate on something like that. Uh, but actually, as uh, I... Uh, mm, uh, studied at uh, Mesa. Uh, it's not just about um, the theory, it's not about just uh, uh, how bad is uh, next generation. It, um, it was um, uh, actually based on uh, autobiographies uh, uh, going back to 1584, USA autobiographies, and um, there are two authors. Uh, William, William Strauss and Neil uh, Ho uh, that uh, wrote uh, a book, Generation. It was uh, their first book. Uh, and uh, after that, uh, they found a pattern that uh, history has cycles. Uh, it's about uh, 80 years cycles, um, which uh, uh, contain four uh, four stages, and uh, four stages. Uh, each stage is about uh, twenty years plus minus. Each uh, stage is high uh, when uh, institutionals is very very strong and all societies very united uh, in their opinion uh, which way we need to move. Um, and so it's not uh, too many uh, individualists. Uh, it uh, was uh, a last a last high period. It was uh, uh, post World War II uh, history, uh, and uh, this generation is called like uh, idealist or uh, or baby boomers. So they could be uh, very conservative. Uh, next stage is awakening, where. Uh, Institutions are attacked uh, for the name of individuals. And uh, people who was born in this stage, in, uh, authors called uh, them uh, reactive, but uh, in the next uh, books they called it like uh, nomads. Uh, next stage is unraveling. Unraveling uh, and uh, millennials uh, was born in this stage and uh, uh, authors called uh, them not millennials, uh, millennials, uh, but civic and hero. And last stage uh, we live in this now is crisis. Uh, crisis uh, lead to generate adaptive uh, people. Or uh, next, uh, their next uh, name is artist. It's because. Uh, Institutionals, uh, they mostly uh, destroyed uh, as, uh, as the way they used, uh, used to be and they need to be uh, rebuilt in the new way uh, and um, fit to our new uh, life. So, uh, actually uh, it's not about uh, that each generation are uh, worse than uh, previous. It's mostly about that um, people are people. Uh, we have some uh, 
strong and weak uh, uh, sides. And um, the time when we uh, was born, uh, it affects for our mental development. But uh, in our midlife, uh, we we used to we used to strengthen our uh, strength, uh, strengths and uh, turn our awareness to uh, adventures. So uh, millennial, millennials uh, in their midlife, they uh, prefer to uh, change change uh, this crisis because uh, she, they live in it. And artists, it's more about, not about they are so adaptive and uh, weak. No, it's more about they uh, try to understand uh, in their own way as uh, individual um, people. Um, and I really believe that our uh, world really become better. Anyway, uh, some people could say that uh, uh, before gr grass was greener and food was tasted, yeah, we have some problems, but um, you know why I believe in it? Because when I told my grandma this Mashutka story, <laughs> this, uh, she said, uh, you know, your aunt told me the same in the face when she was 20, but now, after divorce, she's so, so grateful for me. <laughs> Thank you very much. After the winter time. What kind of feelings do you have in the winter? You feel cold, you feel like it's windy, it's not much terrific, and when it's coming the first March, then we're starting here in cats, <coughs> having fun, we see trees blossoming, and we feel that something happening in the air, which is love. Everything which is happening in spring give us the new opportunities. It's something that opens the door and we are ready to step in and to hang out in the great mood, going into the streets, having fun and all the plans where we've been sleeping probably and writing all our commitments for the new year resolutions we are trying to go to the gym, we are trying to make any of the plans for the travels, we are planning for the main holidays and all everything else. So I believe that it's the time when the April, on the second half of April and the May, when the little flower is blossoming and when you have this blossoming air, full air, then you feel that you are really feeling good about yourself. And it's also very important, those of you who were born in spring, please raise your hands. Those are spring kids. <laughs> they know that this time is very special because it's a couple of months before the summertime and it's always great to see and to breathe the flowers in the springtime. The arrival of spring, Jaroslav. After all, after winter, our spirit wake uh, up. Our eyes uh, see all around and all around is beautiful. Our nature is green, but so good, so good. And uh, our spirit want some song. We walk around, around the street. Around the whole, uh, around the um, homes, and uh, all in our life is very good. Spring is a very good.
good season. I think it's a very good season for us. Same was there. And I guess actually the best time is always. Because, I mean, you can even like swim all the time, you can bicycle all the time, it's just cold. But if you basically, I mean, and you think in Ukraine the winter is a little cooler than in Germany. But I guess it's still pretty much the same, so you can go out. And I would say um, either you do it by feeling, or you feel and you go out, or <laughs> you just have like, like a passion for it, and then you do it anyways. So, what I noticed here is that in, the, in some rivers here, a lot of people do this like kind of tradition. They are completely naked, drink vodka, and <laughs> swim in the rivers. So, I think at least when I see this, then I know, okay, now no, it's the time to go out and swim naked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. Some of that, his first memories of spring, and that's my question. For you, and his first memories, by the way, are swimming. Uh, he doesn't remember whether he had clothes on or not, but at that age, it doesn't matter. In the death snow. I'd like to ask you, what are your earliest memories of springtime, Yulia? Canoe. Canoe and Baidarka. 
it's like rafting. Rafting when you um, when you um, um, swim on on Vaidarka down to the river. It's like three three days uh, three days of full um, full Carpathian mountain, full uh, full nature. Um, you feel um, like uh, feel um, in harmony with your nature and. Uh, it's like um, refreshing, refreshing gives you more strength uh, inside uh, to um, to come back and to make uh, your life better. Thank you. Yeah, I noticed spring is a time of completing school. Completing school is a time of change, and change makes people nervous. So along about April, May, June, it's kind of, oh, what comes next? Uh, excuse me, um, ooh, I just wrote this down, I looked at it and I forgot. It's probably, don't get it, you forget these things. Uh, Terras. Oh. Uh, well, yeah, graduation is uh, the bridge between your childhood and your grown-up life and being a grown-up. And it's kind of similar to spring, uh, similarly to how spring is a change and gradual transition from winter into summer. You gradually transition from being a child to being a grown-up. Uh, and I remember everyone telling me that this is a big decision, that now life is gonna change completely and that you have to prepare for it and that you have to be very smart about it. Um, I can't say that I didn't believe them, but I couldn't quite feel the pressure for some reason. And um, when I was sitting on my graduation ceremony, I, 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 didn't, I didn't feel this, this big decision coming up because I had like 16, 17 years of my life just living in my hometown, hanging out with friends, uh, having my parents make, like feed me, give me lunches to school, uh, like provide me with a place to live, and uh, basically making all the decisions for me. So when this change, change to being a grown up comes, you realize you realize that although you kind of expected something would happen, you didn't actually understand how how much it changes, and um, that's how I kind of feel about all the changes that we face uh, in our day-to-day -day lives. It's, uh, you know the change is coming, but somehow you're still not completely prepared for it. And um, not, not completely expected. And uh, although you know it comes, you uh, still cannot prepare completely for it. And um, that's what makes, it, makes change exciting. Thank you. The ball out of the park, figuratively speaking. Now this spring I noticed for the first time that there are butterflies in early March. And I thought, where do those butterflies come from? They have to spend the winter in their chrysalis. They can't come from eggs because there would be nothing for the caterpillars to eat this time of year. I never thought about that before. But there is a member of our audience who has given a lot of thought to these things. So I'd like to ask Victor Fursoff to tell us about the animals that show up in the spring. The frogs, the birds. Well, well, what's about spring? Always I'm watching for the animals because actually I'm going two times every day out of my house because I have a toy. Terrier, very small, very small animal, very small dog. So that's why I'm very observative. That's it. first and the second. I'm biologist. So for biologist to be out of your room, it's very important. Actually, I'm spending more than eight hours watching to my microscope with some dried and dead animals. <laughs> so this is slightly boring. And some people say during the lifetime, people becoming like this, this, this because of they watch it under the microscope. That's why go outside, very important. What's about animals? They're becoming crowded everywhere around. Actually, that's why you need to have some kind of like some small tubes to catch them inside and to make 
uh, a story about them just to take a story uh, on the video that's I do it uh, regularly and what, what are coming are actually coming insects insects were just sleeping somewhere underground under leaves in the, under the bark and of course in each ch ch children time in a kindergarten I collected first of all ladybugs this was the first experience you are just watching for leaves and what you are finding ladybug and you are just seeing in the sun about ladybug that's very famous everyone loves ladybug I hope so but everyone hates cockroaches that's why if you show a big cockroach so somebody people say that I'm hating them I'm if you show just spider I have a special spider caracord you know just in my stock so if you want I can show you caracord doesn't exist in the Kiev but it exists in my stock so that's why I'm still watching and when spring is coming I have more tubes and boxes in my backpack because everywhere I'm as I said biologist in the springtime and in summertime should watch not forward but should down because someone is just crawling around so I catch them and I will show them all in my video stories some people say they're funny so I invite you to my YouTube channel with my name Victor Furzo and I'm always a beekeeper teacher so you will enjoy it I hope so Zelensky and Poroshenko ushered in a time of more time, daylight savings. And the question is, we have an extra hour of daylight in the day. What are you doing with it, Mike? Well, it's always good to have an extra hour, though it's a pity when it's come, uh, like when we're going backwards. It's just one, this one hour is stolen from us and it's already dark in, in, in the winter. But this one hour, hour is for not sitting at home, I guess. You just, if it's bright, if it's good weather, you just have to, even if you don't like that, you just have to take your ass and do it just like pull, pull it out of the, of the house. Though it's sometimes when we're, to, we're talking about the, uh, the the clothes, you know, like it, it was challenging because when you look at the street and you want to realize what kind of weather is there, it's it's very, uh, it's it's strange because some people wear t-shirts and some here people wear raincoats. Well, it's time of the year, but I just encourage everyone, and that's based on my experience, uh, that uh, the longer day is, the more fun you may have. Just go outside. Take, uh, take some cover, sit on the lawn, have some coffee, and uh, just enjoy the, the life. This one hour for you is extra hour for enjoying your life. Spring is a time of revolution. We have the Prague Spring, that was before the baby boomers, I think, and we had the Arab Spring recently, and we have things uh, is. Uh, Rita suggests things are percolating all over the world now. So, what do you see in store for this spring, Alexander? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, okay, just to preface, uh, uh, my degrees are in political science and global affairs, so uh, we study a lot of politics, of course. Actually, it always struck me that revolutions usually don't happen in spring. Uh, American Revolution, July 4th, French Revolution, July 14th. In Slavic countries, for some reason, people get more angry when it's cold, so Russian Revolution in November, Czech Revolution in November. Uh, phew, sp spring is spring. Um, the Arab Spring actually happened, does anybody know why it happened? Where it, where it started? The Arab Spring happened in, uh, first uh, started in Morocco, and it happened uh, from a breach of security in the United States Army. Um, I don't know why they would give a private access to 100,000 classified documents, but they did. 
and he gave them to this uh, guy, Julian Assange, maybe you've heard his name, and uh, so he posted a lot of them online. And uh, what ha was happening in Morocco was that uh, the people who were living quite badly uh, got angry when they heard that the son of the king had pet lions and, and giraffes and everything. I don't know about the giraffes, but he did have a pet lion. And so a man took gasoline, poured it on himself, and uh, in English it's called uh, self-emolliate. He set himself on fire. And uh, this led to a uh, revolution in Morocco that then spread to uh, Algeria, um, Egypt, and then Syria. Uh, so this is the Arab Spring. Uh, the other Spring Revolution that was mentioned was? Prague. Prague. Oh yes, the Prague Spring. Um, as, a, as a fellow Slavic country, um, maybe I'm sure people here can relate. Interesting story about this Prague Spring. I see the red flag, and then I'll finish. Um, if you've ever been to Prague, you know that the streets make absolutely no sense. They go this way and that way. And there's these famous scenes of Russian tank drivers uh, looking at the map, and the Prajanki changed all the street signs. And you see these <laughs> Russian tankers just... They have no idea where they're going, so, and I have no idea where the revolutions are going in spring, even though I have a degree in political science. <laughs> <laughs>